بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ٹوڈے وی ول ڈسکس ایتھرو پوائٹن اینڈ ان شورٹ اٹ از آلسو ریٹن ایز ای پی او ای پو اٹ از آلسو کارڈ ای پو ایتھرو پوائٹن از ای گلائکو پروٹین ای سائٹو کائن secreted mainly by the kidney in response to cellular hypoxia which stimulate red blood cell production erythropoiesis in the bone marrow so that is cytokine protein cytokine protein mean they are small protein in globular in structure and actually a protein is hormone in nature the secretory organ in adulthood is kidney and when it is secreted it cause production of red blood cell which is called erythropoiesis and the causative causative agent is hypoxia when there is low partial pressure of oxygen erythropoietin is produced and then it causes production of the red blood cell erythropoietin is produced daily in a concentration of 10 to 20 milli unit per milli liter this is the constant production and this production is sufficient for the turn over of the rbc the daily turn over of the rbc as we know that in every second 2.5 million or bcs are destroyed and the same number of or bcs are produced in one second so this is normal phenomena by which the viscosity of blood is maintained if or bcs are produced in less number so the viscosity of blood is decreased and when if the rbc production is more than the turn over so the viscosity increase so for normal production of rbc is 10 milli unit per milliliter is produced daily causes of elevated level of erythropoietin hypoxia result resulting in elevated level of epo up to 10000 milli unit per liter normal daily production as i told you in the previous slide is 10 to 20 milli unit per milli liter common cause of cellular hypoxia include low blood volume anemia low hemoglobin poor blood flow pulmonary disease cardiac disease and hemorrhage so all these conditions cause hypoxia and which lead to the production of erythro poietin here in this picture you can see that when there is low partial pressure or tension of oxygen in the blood when this blood is passed through the kidney the kidney actually increase the production of erythro poietin and this erythropoietin then increase the production of 
red blood cell in the bone marrow and there is uh, this is a case of anemia when anemia uh, we have hemoglobin and hemoglobin is responsible for transport of oxygen so when there, there are less red blood cell less hemoglobin is available less oxygen is transported this is sensed by the kidney in the kidney store production of erythropoietin so here in this picture you can see that this is the kidney section of the kidney cross section and you can see that when normoxia in normoxia condition less cell in the kidney are producing erythropoietin but when there is hypoxia more cell in the kidneys are activated and then they produce erythropoietin so the erythropoietin secretion is increased erythropoietin is actually secreted by the interstitial fibroblast fibroblast in the kidney in close association with the pericap capillary and proximal convoluting tubules here you can see that this is the section of the kidney and this area is a part of it is it has been enlarged here you can see this is the cortex this is the medulla of the kidney here in cortex and medulla we have a structure called nephron and nephron is composed of bowman capsule proximal tubules two pop handle ascending loop of handle this is descending and this is ascending and then distal convoluting tubule and the rest of the structures but we are concerned here with this area these structures are located in the medulla or part of the proximal tubule is also located in the most of the part of nephron are located in the cortex and part of the proximal tubules are located also located in the medulla that's why the erythropoietin is produced by cortex and part of the uh, upper medulla which is near to the cortex in this area when we have capillaries network and this capillary net network is the efferent atrial which originate from the bowman capsule and make a mesh network around the proximal tubule and loop of handle and distal convoluting tubules in between there are cell which are called fibroblast and these fibroblasts are responsible for the production of erythropoietin erythropoietin is also produced by the various sinusoidal cell in the liver this is the section of a liver and this is sinusoid contain the venous blood and here these are the sinusoidal cell so two organ in the body are responsible for the production of erythropoietin one is the kidney and the other is liver some cell of the reticulo and ophelial system also are secreted erythropoietin the production of erythropoietin by the liver is dominant during fetal and 
perinatal period when still the baby is in the womb of the mother the atropoietin is produced by the liver but when the baby is born and he starts growing this action is taken by the bones or bone marrow then the bone marrow start production of, sorry then the kidney start production of erythropoietin erythropoietin is homologous with the thrombopoietin thrombopoietin is also a hormone and it is responsible for the production of platelets and this is also uh, secreted by the kidney and liver and platelets are produced from the megakaryocytes and this uh, thrombopoietin acts on megakaryocytes and produces platelets in this diagram you can see that when there is low blood oxygen level this signal is sent to the liver and kidney or this low level is sensed by the liver and kidney the liver and kidney then start production of erythropoietin as it is hormone in nature it is added into the circulation and through circulation this erythropoietin hurries to the bone and act on the bone marrow on the stem cell which are responsible for the production of red blood cells when the red blood cells are produced in sufficient amount in sufficient number then negative feedback signals are sent to the liver and kidney and they both organ stop production of erythropoietin so this is the cycle which actually that there is a positive and negative back, back mechanism when there is low oxygen erythropoietin uh, is released in a large number or a large concentration and when there is a uh, oxygen content concentration or partial pressure is normal the erythropoietin uh, releases a uh, countdown or it is from uh, reduce from high level to low le level now disease status the common cause of erythropoietin deficiency is chronic kidney disease when the kidney or damage their ability to produce erythropoietin is compromised in anemia in certain cells why we say that kidney is responsible for the production of erythropoietin it is clear from the condition when a person is suffering from renal disease or renal failure in their condition the kidney fail to produce erythropoietin and the patient become anemic so this is the proof that when there is when there is kidney failure erythro the patient become anemic and this shows that erythropoietin is produced this is a proof that erythropoietin is produced by the kidney the anemia associated with chronic kidney disease can be 
alleviated by treatment with erythropoietin. In condition when there is the renal failure and the patient develop anemia, this anemia can be corrected by exogenous erythropoietin. When erythropoietin is injected, the bone marrow then produce red blood cell. Exogenous erythropoietin. What is exogenous erythropoietin? Exogenous erythropoietin is also called recombinant human erythropoietin and written as RHEPO. It is produced by recombinant DNA technology in cell culture and are collectively called erythropoiesis stimulating agent ESA erythropoietin stimulating agent. Two types of recombinant human erythropoietin are epotene alpha and epotene beta. Erythropoiesis stimulating agents are used in the treatment of anemia in chronic kidney disease. Anemia in myelodysplasia and in anemia from cancer chemotherapy. In myelodysplasia, either red cells are not becoming mature or they are mature but have abnormal uh, membrane. Therefore, when these cells pass from the narrow capillaries or from the pulp of spleen, they are ruptured easily. So the lifespan of such cells are shorter than the normal RBC lifespan of 120 days. In this condition, patient develop anemia. So, in this case, we can also use erythropoietin. It is also used after chemotherapy of the cancer patient. Actually, chemotherapy agents cause depression of the bone marrow. Therefore, if erythropoietin is given, this heterogeneous protein, erythropoietin is given to such patient, it improves the anemia. Every drug has also its side effects. So, erythropoietin has also side effects. It may cause sudden death, myocardial infarction, stroke, venous thrombosis, and tumor recurrence. Why it causes sudden death, myocardial infarction, or stroke? Because due to erythropoietin, if not assessed properly, it causes excessive production of red blood cell and due to which the blood is become viscous and this viscosity may block the coronary artery of the cerebral vessels or it may activate the clotting mechanism due to which either myocardial infarction may occur or the patient may get stroke or there may be thromboembolism. The thrombus is formed and when this thrombus is detached and flow in the uh, blood and 
infected in some other organ, this is called embolism. And tumor recurrence, why it causes recurrence of the tumor? Because they are, they act on these cells and cause generation of the cell. So the arteritic tumor or, or dormant tumor can be uh, re activated by the therapy of erythropoietin. All these risk, risk for increase, the risk of sudden death, myocardial infarction and stroke. It is increased in case when a patient is treated, an anemic patient is treated with erythropoietin whose Hemoglobin concentration is 11 gram, 11 gram per deciliter to 12 gram per deciliter. So, erythropoietin may not be used in this mild to moderate anemia because in this case it can cause these complications. Pharmacology, erythropoietin is highly glycosylated, 40% of total molecular weight. Glycosylated means it, uh, it contains sugar molecules and 40% of these molecules are, are sugar and it's half like in the blood when it's released it remains in the circulation for five hours atropoietin half-life may vary between endogenous and various recombinant version the half the, the half-life of endogenous and recombinant version are different because when glycosylation of or any alteration in the eco y recombinant technology can increase the life of the erythropoietin because it made the erythropoietin more stable in the blood. This actually uh, give the benefit that a patient doesn't need repeated injection of erythropoietin. If we will give an injection and when it will dis disappear from the blood in five hours, so after five hours again another injection will be needed but by recombinant technology the half the life of erythropoietin is increased so recurrent injection the patient don't need recurrent uh, exogenous erythropoietin main function of erythropoietin the main function of erythropoietin is production of red blood cell and this production is in the bone marrow. Erythropoietin is essential hormone for red blood cell production. Without it, definitive erythropoiesis does not take place. Under hypoxic condition, the kidney will produce and secrete increase production uh, secrete to increase the production of red blood cell by targeting colony forming unit erythrocyte. There are colonies in the bone marrow 
and the erythropoietin actually attack these colonies or act in these colonies which are responsible for the production of erythropoietin. This colony is called a colony permeating unit of erythrocyte and erythropoietin act on the pro-erythroblast and basophilic erythroblast subset in the differentiation. Erythropoietin has its primary effect on red blood cell progermatin and precursor. The pro-erythroblast and basophilic erythroblast are precursor. The erythropoietin acts in the bone marrow on the stem cell and in the stem cell on a particular colony which is called colony permanent erythrocyte and then also erythropoietin acts on the precursor cell of the red blood cell. Erythropoietin actually protect the precursor cell from apoptosis or cell death because it protects these cells from damage. Erythropoietin is the primary erythropoietin factor that cooperate with various other group factor, growth factor, for example, interleukin-3, interleukin-6, and glucocorticoid. And stem cell factor. Stem cell factor. Involved in the development of erythroid lineage for multipotential progenerator. These interleukin 3, 6, and glycocorticoids they are growth inducer and growth differentiation. So in growth in, in growth and both in differentiation the erythropoietin help these factors to grow the cell and to differentiate the cell. What is mean by the growth and by the differentiation? Here, this is the stem cell. Erythropoietin act here on a, a specific colony of red blood cell and make its progenerator cell pro erythroblast so it helps the these factors will differentiate the stem cell to produce progenitor cell of the red blood cell and then help in the growth of these cells The colony forming unit erythroid express maximum erythropoietin receptor density and is completely dependent on erythropoietin for further differentiation. Here, these cells which are responsible for the production of red blood cells, they have a receptor on their cell membrane and when erythropoietin is attached to that cell membrane it causes production of red blood cell and differentiation of the cells which are responsible for the production of red blood cell they are progenerator cells like proerythroblast and basophilic erythroblast. These proerythroblasts 
and basophilic erythroblast also have receptor for protein the fire or erythropoietin and by this way it act on the surface of or the cell membrane attached to the receptor and force them to produce red blood cell. Non hemopoietic role of erythropoietin. Erythropoietin was reported to have a range of action beyond stimulation of erythropoiesis. It has other role also. One important role is vasoconstriction. And due to this vasoconstriction, hypertension. A patient is become hypertensive when he is injected, his blood pressure is shoot up. It also stimulates angiotensin, uh, angiogenesis and promoting cell survival via activation of eporeceptor resulting in apoptosis, apoptotic effect on ischemic tissue. How well this study is controversial and some researchers are not agree with these uh, studies. Mechanism of action of erythropoietin. Erythropoietin has shown to exert its effect by binding to the erythropoietin receptors. This is the, its mechanism of action, action how erythropoietin act and produce RBCs. It actually attach to the receptor of the cells which are responsible for the production of red blood cell. Erythropoietin binds to the erythropoietin receptor on the red cell pro-generator surface and activate a J2 signal cascade. A J2 signal cas cascade is actually a uh, protein signals which are sent to the nucleus of the cell and their DNA is activated supposed to produce cells. These are, there are very uh, steps of the J reaction and they occur in hierarchy and after that it stimulates the cell DNA and produce the cell. This is actually uh, part of the biochemistry. Biochemist can express it in better way. As the J reaction actually act on the cell which contain nucleus and we know that the red blood cell uh, don't have any cell so it has no receptor for erythropoietin and there is no change in the mature or we see neither in the shape or neither in the number erythropoietin do nothing with the red blood cells mature red blood cell in addition there is conclusive conclusive evidence that erythropoietin receptor expression is upper upregulated in brain injury when there is injury to the brain tissue the erythropoietin uh, also uh, the release of erythropoietin is also increased and it causes uh, protection of the, the, the brain from further injuries 
So the whole story of erythropoietin, hypoxia, and red blood cell formation is factor that decreased tissue oxygenation. One is the low blood volume, other is anemia, the third one is low hemoglobin, poor blood flow, pulmonary disease, cardiac disease, and hemorrhage. Low blood volume can occur from hemorrhage or gastroenteritis. Anemia. In anemia, we have low hemoglobin or low or red blood cells. And poor blood flow can occur due to stagnation of blood or due to cardiac diseases, congestive cardiac disease, failure of the left side or failure of the right side a regular disease which has a decreased flow in the blood or increased viscosity of the blood. Uh, these are the conditions in which blood flow is become decreased and low tissue oxygenation occur. In pulmonary diseases like asthma, bronchitis, pneumonia, chronic bronchitis, pulmonary edema, bronchiectasis, in all these conditions, the absorption of oxygen from the alveoli is decreased, from alveoli in the lung is decreased, and less oxygen is transported and tissue uh, oxygenation is decreased and hemorrhage. Hemorrhage cause low blood volume. All these conditions cause decrease in tissue oxygenation and when there is decreased tissue oxygenation it increases erythropoietin by kidney and the kidney produces erythropoietin and this erythropoietin is produced it acts on hemopoietic stem cells and these hemopoietic stem cells as I described in the previous slides produce proerythroblast in combination with the differentiation and growth factors and then the red blood cell is produced so erythropoietin not only increase the number of red blood cells that it also uh, reduce the time of maturation. The blood cells are produced in large number and also they are mature in less time. So thank you. Hoping you may have learned something of the lecture, please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for in-time notification of new update. Thank you once again.